Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we're going to go over some of the things that I use for post-processing. What is post-processing? So in case you didn't know what post-processing is, it is the process of getting your model ready for paint after printing. So this is the part where you do all of your sanding and filling and primering and all of that stuff that everybody just absolutely loves to hate. So today I'm going to show you a few tips and tricks that I use in order to do this post-processing thing. And hopefully it'll make your life a little bit easier while you get ready to paint your model. And hey, while you're here, go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit that like button as well as that notification bell. That way you don't miss out on any future videos. So let's get started. So I have been printing a lot here lately, a lot of different models, and I seem to be juggling a lot of projects at one time. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over some of these things that I've been doing to get these models ready for paint and go over some of the tools that I use and let's go ahead and get started. So this right here is one of the models I've been working on, which is Wicked's Magneto. And uh, this thing is really brilliant. Uh, comes in like uh, four different heads on it and everything. Uh, but this is the final stage of what you want your model to really look like before you start slapping some paint on it. But how do you get there? Well, let's find out. All right, so right here are some of the little tools that I use. A little crude, but uh, this is what I use in getting everything prepped. Uh, one thing I do recommend is uh, definitely get you some sanding sticks, uh, of course some sanding paper, uh, and what I do is I break these down into little small pieces and even smaller pieces for uh, hard to reach areas and fine detailing stuff. Uh, use different grits, of course uh, some spot putty right here that I use for small imperfections and larger putty right here that I use, which is half gone, <laughs> uh, for larger cracks and stuff. And I can't forget my G-Tool here, and I do have a link below in the description. Uh, you can get this off Amazon, and I'll show you more about this again. And of course, I use some tweezers, I use my snippets, and I also use some of these smaller uh, files right here for hard-to-reach areas uh, to get off support divots and uh, use uh, in other areas. So. Uh, Let's, uh, let me show you uh, some of these things in action and what I use them for. All right, so generally what I usually do um, when I get a piece off of the build plate and I wash it and I cure it, uh, then I start looking for things like this right here, like these where the supports were. And what I'll do is um, I'll try to kind of like nub them down as much as I can, uh, clip them off as much as I can that way. Um, I don't have to use the sandpaper as much. And in these like little tight areas right here, that's why I clip these little small pieces right here to try and get in uh, and sand those down. Uh, and I don't like go through and just go crazy sanding the whole thing down because there's a lot of fine detail in there. But also in little tight areas like this, this is what you use these files for. So these files will actually help you get in there and just knock that down really good and uh, not take away from a lot of your detail. Uh, and the metal files uh, work very fast. Um, but yeah, you can get in there and knock these uh, little divots down. As you can see, I started kind of knocking those down uh, and getting rid of them. Like these little corner files like this are perfect for getting up under your little hard to reach areas. Now, if I have a piece that I haven't cured yet, I've got it washed and it's dried, um, and I see like little flat areas like this that have a lot of the divots on the edges. Now I will go in and use some of that sandpaper to go ahead and knock that down while it's soft. It's just so much easier to sand on a straight surface. And that way I can actually um, get it level and everything real much quicker before I get it cured. What problem is um, when you get it cured and you start sanding on this, uh, it creates a little bit more dust. And again, make sure you wear a dust mask when doing this, uh, but I'm just showing you guys today on it for the meantime. Uh, and it just, you know, you don't get as much dust uh, from a cured piece. So another thing that I look at too is I look at like where these little support parts 
are and I'll go in and with my tweezers and just take them off. I'll go through and make sure that everything is just removed um, and that way I don't have to try and get in there and force everything. If it becomes a problem where I can't reach it then I'll use my snips to go in snip it and then take the tweezers and go in like little tight areas and get it off of there. Um, I use auto supports so you'll get a lot of these little little bitty support pieces and stuff kind of sitting everywhere and again just go through and just take them off. Another thing that I'll do um, while the piece is still soft and while it is uncured if I have little things like this I'll just go in and use my knife just to clip them off of there and that way I can just get them off and uh, light sanding when it's cured or you can do it now um, but this way I'm not splintering into the piece itself and I can just scrape that off right here while it's still soft it's so much easier to do uh, before it's cured and if you have any things like this it's best to go in and go ahead and just clip those off of there while the uh, resin is still soft and not cured that way um, you don't crack or splinter off any of the the uh, the model itself and that way you can go in and just sand down what's left and so areas like this where it's a little tough to get some sandpaper you can use your file to knock that down and uh, get it pretty smooth one thing I am constantly doing in the whole post processing stage is uh, I am dry fitting my pieces together uh, just to make sure that everything fits snug and everything fits together and that way uh, it just so much easier whenever I start to go in for the final completion of gluing everything but um, yeah make sure that you are constantly uh, dry fitting everything together before you glue in place that way uh, you can have a better look at your seams and gaps and uh, we're going to move to that next so seams and gaps are just a part of modeling uh, it's inevitable it's going to happen um, you're going to run into it but what you want to do is you want to get them uh, sanded down as best as possible before you actually glue these pieces together as you can see this leg here is going to have a minimal gap I mean and this is what you're striving for uh, that way whenever you go in to use any of your filler it's very minimal uh, you don't have huge gaps and everything fits together pretty snug um, but uh, that's what you want to do in the sanding phase so now let's go in and I'm going to show you what I'm going to use to fill up this minimal gap here so I use a plastic wood filler here. You can use whatever works for you. Uh, in this case right here, I'm getting down to the bottom of the barrel here and this stuff is starting to dry out a little bit, but that's okay because this is activated by water. So what I'll do is I'll actually take a little piece of this and kind of uh, put it in place a little bit and then I'll just actually just dip my finger in some water and that way I can kind of spread it through. You can do this with your finger, you can do it with a brush, however you want to. Uh, but then I'll just go in and fill in this little small gap here um, with this uh, filler, with this putty, and let it dry. This stuff dries in like no time at all. So find you a good wood filler or a good putty, uh, get it on there, and then uh, kind of spread it around a little bit. And then I'll even take a paper towel and go in and kind of wipe off the excess where it doesn't belong um, and that way um, you won't be able to tell the seam once it's all dry and you probably won't have to do any sanding on it and then once you got it all filled it should look something a little similar to this it could be a little cleaner but uh, all the seams are filled and uh, it's pretty dry and it dries in a matter of like 30 minutes to an hour and then what you want to do is uh, get you a light coat of primer on here to find out where you are as far as uh, how much you need to sand or if you can eyeball it then go through here and sand some of this down knock it down and then do the primer so for bigger gaps like this you see here where this actual piece just split um, I could have reprinted this, but I did not want to waste the resin um, to go back through and this was a uh, eight hour piece to print 
And so I can go through this right here and actually fix this with some Aves Epoxy Sculpt. And what this does, this fills up your larger gaps here. And all you gotta do is fill it in and uh, knock it down, sand it down a little bit and primer it. And you wouldn't be able to tell uh, where, uh, where the split was once you get done. Yeah, and you can't forget about the little gaps and seams like when conjoining pieces like this leg right here where the boot meets. Uh, so yeah, definitely wanna go in there and push this uh, putty up into there. So I definitely wanna go into there and push this up into there and shape it out a little bit. And that way I get it ready to, get it ready to sand and uh, ready for a primary. So in extreme cases like this, where you get a piece that has to have a lot of supports on it and it comes off, you're gonna have a lot of these divots. So this is where the elbow grease comes in. You're gonna have to take these little small pieces of uh, sandpaper and get in here and knock these down. But one good thing that you can do is once you get them knocked down is you got this G tool here. I use this thing right here to go in and it actually will help uh, smooth some of these surfaces down without digging into a lot of the detail. And of course, that's what you use your sanding sticks for getting in some of these hard to reach areas and that's what you use your files for to get in some of these hard to reach areas so yeah if you look on like certain areas of your model too you see these swirl marks this g tool will actually take care of a lot of that without having uh without having to go in and doing a lot of heavy sanding on this When it comes to gluing, I use this BSI two-part epoxy right here when it comes to larger parts like the torso that has to be glued on to the, uh, the bottom uh, part. And then I use the just a regular super glue with an accelerant uh, for smaller pieces. I, so I don't use super glue on larger parts because this epoxy here actually is stronger and will last a lot longer on bigger pieces. All right, so here we have the Hulk who is ready for the first base layer of primer to see um, how everything looks once, uh, get a little bit of primer on it. As you can see, I went through and I filled up the joints here, um, the neck seam there, and done a lot of the sanding, a lot of the filling in, and this one here, I actually use an FDM printer for the base. I've got it all filled in there, so that's ready uh, to go. Uh, where the arms are, I filled in there. Uh, so once I get some primer on this thing, I'll actually be able to tell what other areas I need to work on, uh, where it's split right there in the crotch, uh, just different things. But this is the, the stage you want to get to. Um, and then once you uh, put a little primer on it, it'll reveal other areas of opportunity that you can go back in and fix. So once I get everything filled, sanded, primered, then I start blocking out the model like I've got right here with this Hulk. But this is what uh, it all comes to. Once you uh, get everything ready, uh, your paint process starts to move along and it's all downhill from there. All right, everybody, I hope you got something out of this video. I hope this gives you kind of a perspective of what I go through when I do my post-processing before paint. And these are some of the things and some of the devices that you can use to help you in your modeling experience. I'd like to take this time to thank all my Patreon members. If you would like to become a member of the Patreon, the link is below in the description. As always, thank you for your support and watching the videos. And as always, everybody, stay safe out there. Get out and create something. Print, prep, paint, repeat. And until the next video, we'll see you. This has to be the most painful piece I've ever worked on. All these damn spikes back here. I can tell you how many times I've poked my fingers.